people that make the good deals. Well, if cash is going to be king, Mr. Trump, why didn't you start selling a couple of years ago when the market was high? I don't think the market's any different from my kind of thing. The real estate the market is going in the dumper. But you understand, what I own is trophies. Swiss the Swiss? Plaza Hotel, which I wouldn't sell, but the Plaza Hotel is a trophy. The Taj Mahal, where it has record earnings, that's a trophy. I own trophies. A trophy doesn't go down. Real estate can go down. And I don't know that real estate's going down if you want to really know the truth. I'm doing a building, Trump Palace, on East 69th Street, and we're getting record prices and record sales. Well, we're you, doing very well. You can't pay your bills with trophies. I think you can pay your bills with trophies. Perhaps Trump's proudest trophy is the Plaza Hotel in New York City on Central Park South. Looking at the numbers here may help explain why it is so difficult to value Trump's holdings. Trump bought the plaza in 1988 for $407 million, all borrowed according to Forbes. He put in another $25 million in renovations. Forbes lists the hotel on its asset sheet at $400 million. Trump says that's low. What's it worth today? I think it's worth a lot of money, but I couldn't tell you what it's worth. I think when you put up the plaza, if the plaza were ever for sale, it's worth a tremendous amount of money, more than that, a tremendous amount, but I can't tell you. Look, well, you the told another Bel Air Hotel, that, that, that the, that the, the Bel Air Hotel, Brunei, excuse me, excuse me, well, I, the Bel Air Hotel plaza. sold for, excuse me, Sam, you're rude to most people, don't be rude to me. The Bel Air Hotel sold, sold for a million three a room, a million three a room. The Plaza Hotel, the Bel Air in Los Angeles, the Plaza Hotel has 800 and some odd rooms. Tell me, if it's a million, does that mean $800 million? I don't know what the plaza's worth. You're My not purpose was not to be rude, but we were on the plaza, and I take your point that a property is worth what someone will pay it for depends. it. It depends, yeah, absolutely. And you told us you didn't know what it was worth, and I just wanted to remind you, that did you not tell a reporter that the Sultan of Brunei had offered you, what, seven, seven hundred million? Seven hundred and fifty million dollars. But, but you have to understand something. I have no idea what it's worth. I don't know what it's worth until I put it up for sale. Trump has put another of his trophies up for sale, his yacht, which we caught up with this week in Hong Kong. And he says he's about to close the deal. Okay, let's take the Trump princess. You've got about 50 million in it? I don't buy 50 million. I bought, the, I bought it for 29. I spent less than 10 on fixing it. How do you figure 50 million? That's the Forbes figure. Well, Forbes, you don't understand. Forbes is doing everything they can, possibly, to make me look as bad as possible. Now, that's another thing. I don't believe they value the Trump princess on building another yacht, and I don't believe they value the Trump princess as what? Well. I will sell the Trump princess for $115 million. Who's going to pay that? A very wealthy man. Have you got the deal? I have just about got the deal, yes. You mean it's signed? I mean it's going to be signed. And if it's not signed by him, it'll be signed by five other people. The Trump princess is a bargain. Now, just how so you understand. Get, how can you sell it for that? Let me ask you about Because that. it's a trophy. Because it's the greatest yacht in the world and because people want to own it. Just so you understand, I bought a boat right. for $29 million. I'm going to sell it for $115 million. Now, it could be between $100 and $115 net, net, net. But I'm going to sell the boat for between $100 and $115 million. Forbes doesn't even discuss it. It's like I don't own it. Trump's financial future may depend on what happens in this building, his brand new opulent Atlantic City Hotel Casino, the Taj Mahal, which opened last month to such fanfare. Forbes says it's worth just under $835 million, a figure Trump does not dispute. What is in dispute is whether the Taj Mahal can operate in the black. Trump borrowed every penny he has invested in the Taj Mahal. Forbes questions whether he can take in enough money to pay off his debt. He did extremely well in the first few weeks of the hotel's operation, but can he keep it up? You, you showed us the headline, which I take your point, that you made a tremendous amount of money in less than a month. Now, Forbes says you have to make $1.3 billion a day each day of the year yep. just to service They're your debt. You need a million dollars a day each day of the year. And a million dollars a day is made by, almost made by Trump Plaza, which is one third the size of the Taj Mahal. But now you have three hotels in Atlantic right. City. Don't they steal from each other? They might to a certain extent and for a certain period of time. Ultimately, they're going to be good for themselves and all of Atlantic City. What's going to happen, in my opinion, is that all three hotels plus the rest of Atlantic City will do better because of the Taj Mahal. So you think that can sustain this kind of casino take day in and day out? Oh, even, I think so. Even though traditionally in the fall and winter, it falls off the at Atlantic The building City. is that great. The building, look, we're talking about April. April is one of the worst months in Atlantic City. All the hoopla. And a portion. The hoopla, the startup mean, hoopla. Doesn't mean anything. People don't go for hoopla, they go for quality. And then why do you indulge a, a lot of the hoopla promotion? 
it, it doesn't do any good. The promotion gets people to look, and now what's happened is they're all coming back. They love it. They were all coming back. But it's all borrowed money. You have to service the debt. Why do you say, do you know my books? Why do you say it's borrowed money? Well, what, if it's what, not what right do you have to say? What do you know about borrowed money? All right, let me tell you what I know. All I know is what people write about you. You're right. I haven't seen your books. What they write about you is well, that... See, if you were smart, you'd want to see my books, okay? Because you'd see that a lot of the statements you make are false. You'd see that, sure, the shuttle has debt, as everything has debt. You if you buy a house... Uh, I might almost consider it. I'm not competent to look over your books, but I can we'll, see that. we'll hire a competent firm. No, I can see that you're not competent An accounting to look over firm your books. to look over your books. Surely, I can see that you're not competent to look at the books. What happens is every asset has, and I'm sure you're not going to play that, every, but now you might because I said I'm sure you won't. Every asset, every asset has some debt. Trump resents recent questioning of his financial health. He particularly dislikes the Forbes article written by Richard Stern, a reporter once before wrote that Merv Griffin had bested Trump in a business deal when it turned out just the other way around. And who now Trump accuses of deliberately excluding income from the Taj Mahal to make his cash flow figure look bad. Just so you understand, Forbes, they included the mortgage, but they didn't include the income. They don't include $34.4 million. It's a disgrace. But again, the same writer that wrote about Merv Griffin and consistently writes negative about Trump because I guess he doesn't like Trump. I don't like him, he doesn't like me, so we're even. Mm -hmm. well, I certainly, Forbes wishes him nothing but the best. We hope he does very well. Um, but I think Mr. Trump's really having a very trying time these days, personally and financially. And so, you know, perhaps what he says, he gets, he gets a little hysterical about what he says. But if you look at where we come out computing that he doesn't have enough cash to pay his debts, we don't include the Todd. We include his two other casinos, but not the Taj. To us, it's a wash at this point. Let's see what happens with the Taj. So in concluding how much money you say that he's spending each year above his income, you don't include the Taj one way or the other? That's correct. It's a total hatchet job. Yeah, it's a hatchet job, you say. But it's a hatchet job that could hurt you, because the banks... It doesn't hurt me. The banks... Well, the banks rely on the name Trump. Can I tell Trump. you something? Can I tell if you the name something? Trump... Well, no, if the name Trump gets smeared by people like you, I mean, it's not the greatest thing in the world. The banks love Trump. Now, it's interesting that Malcolm Forbes has apologized to me, literally, for the last year and a half prior to his death, for the last story they did on me. Every time he'd see me at a function, say, Donald, I'm sorry about that story. We really got it wrong. We really got it wrong. He's probably spinning in his grave when he sees this. If he were alive today, there wouldn't be this story? Uh, I really don't know. I, I mean, Malcolm, you're going to read about this. I think Malcolm had his own problems with me. I do right. think Malcolm had his own problems. You'll read about it in my book, Sam. I think you're going to find the book really good. I hope you buy it. Will it be